Today we're doing mashed potatoes and turnips and it's as a result of some family who traveled to Great Britain and United Kingdom and had that combination there came home and told me they loved them and so we're trying to recreate what they had. So I've got uh, turnips which are, the, the smaller ones that you use are going to be less bitter. Uh, they're also going to be less bitter if they're new. So uh, you can put them in the refrigerator for three to four days to a week, but after that length of time, it doesn't mean you can't use them. It means that you're going to have to make some adjustments in how you cook them in order to eliminate some of the extra uh, odors that are going to be produced. So I've cut these, peeled them. They're real easy to peel. The peel is very thin. Uh, cut them into about uh, three quarter inch cubes, and we're going to just put them into some boiling water, and they're going to cook for about 15 minutes. Now I'm putting them in now. The potatoes will go in later because these take longer to cook. And if you put them in at the same time and cook them for the same length of time, these are either not going to be done uh, or the potatoes are going to be too mushy. So we're going to give these about 15 minutes, then we'll put the potatoes in, give them 10 to 15 minutes, uh, and then we'll proceed from there. The turnips have gone for about 15 minutes, so we're going to add the potatoes. Now I've cut them in a little bit smaller cube. Make sure you use a russet potato or another kind of potato, like a, a golden potato that you would possibly be able to use for mashing. If you use a red potato, you're just going to end up with lumpy uh, a mixture here rather than a smooth one like you probably are going to want. Uh, so these are going to go in and cook a little bit uh, less time, probably another 10 to 15 minutes uh, than the other. Now the interesting thing about this combination is that the turnips were the common vegetable uh, in uh, northern Europe until the potato arrived. And then the potatoes were easy to grow. Uh, they had a better flavor. They were better uh, nutrition-wise. And so the potato kind of took over the place that the, the turnips and the rutabagas had had. And those became more popular as animal feed until about Oh, 2008, the popularity of the turnip actually started to increase. Up until that point, it was described as the most unpopular vegetable everywhere. Uh, and, but the, the popularity started to increase in Great Britain around 2008, and they tied that back to uh, problems with the economy, that the turnips were cheaper than the potato at that point, and so people were switching over. Okay, these are ready to go. So the, the next steps are, are really quite simple. I'm going to drain this off. Uh, because we don't need all that water. Uh, if you're a really creative person, you can save some of that water and make soup or stew with it. Uh, I'm going to drain it off. It's going down the drain for me today. We want to make sure, just like when you're doing potatoes, that you want it to be fairly dry. So drain it as well as you can. And then put it back over the heat just briefly. Keep a close eye on this, however, because it can scorch and you've protected it all this time. You don't want it to go too far now. Okay, I can see a lot of water in there, so we'll let it go a little bit longer, but I'm going to shake it from time to time, just to make sure we're all good. Uh, the, the turnips are a, a good choice. They develop a lot of flavor. I mentioned earlier that over time, if they're in your refrigerator too long, they'll develop a stronger and stronger flavor. It's actually a bitterness that they're developing. Uh, and so if you're at that point, rather than throw that turnip away, as long as it's not soft, once it becomes soft, then you do want to throw it out. Uh, but what you can do with a turnip at that point is put it in the pan with a lot of extra water and then take the lid off it from time to time if you're cooking it with a lid, and that will let some of those bitter, volatile flavors uh, escape. It's the same thing that you can do with broccoli or other members of this uh, family because this is also part of the cabbage family. Okay, I'm going to add to this about a half a teaspoon of kosher salt. I'm going to start on the low end. We can always add more, but we can't take it out. I've got two tablespoons of butter that I've added to it, and I'm going to add about a half a teaspoon of black pepper. Again, this is the, the things that you can do to, to fit your own family. And then I'm going to use the family heirloom potato masher. Every family has some tool that they all use, and this is mine. It works better than anything else I've tried. Uh, and, and just go ahead and mash them. You want to be careful, just like with regular potatoes, that you don't uh, put them in a blender because you're going to end up with glue. Uh, a mixer may work, but again, you've got to watch that uh, real closely to make sure that it doesn't get too soft. We're not going to add any milk to it. Uh, the uh, turnips and the potatoes have enough liquid in them that uh, you really don't need to do that. And mash them as finely as you like. I like them a little bit long, uh, chunkier. I don't like them totally smoothed off. And then the, these are just going to go into a serving bowl for now. But this would be enough to serve at least four people. It's a little bit lighter 
than you would find a regular mashed potato. Uh, it's got um, a little bit more moisture. It's got fewer calories because you've got uh, the uh, turnips in there taking place of some of the potatoes. So this is a nice thing that you can do for a change of pace. Uh, it's got a little bit different flavor than a regular mashed potato would have. I'm just putting a little bit of green on it for color. Uh, otherwise, uh, this is ready to go. Bring out the roast beef and uh, the carrots and you're set for a meal. This is mashed potatoes and turnips for Oklahoma Gardening. I'm we hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.